You might not believe it, but the Nintendo 64 is a perfect console to collect for right now, especially with regards to imports. These cartridges are generally inexpensive, with uh, some exceptions. <laughs> Holy shit. But on the whole, players looking for some 64-bit Nintendo action can do so on the cheapish, especially if they import from Japan. But there's a catch, which we'll demonstrate right here. These two games may look more or less the same, and to an extent, they actually are. But look a little closer and you'll see where the problem lies. Due to the position of the gaps on the back of these cartridges, they will not be able to physically fit in a console from another region. Well, not without performing surgery on your Nintendo 64 anyway. But what if there was a way to bypass this physical barrier of entry? Enter the Hyper Convert Adapter from Hyperkin. The Hyper Convert fits any Nintendo 64 from any region, and allows players to play any other region's cartridges as a result. Though it's probably best not to mix up NTSC and PAL region games and or consoles. But it's still possible. The Hyper Convert is a super simple device, and it's really easy to install. It's really just a pass-through board, so all that's needed is to plug it into your Nintendo 64, then put the game you want to play into the Hyper Convert, and that's it. Power on and voila, your imports play on a domestic system, or vice versa. The Hyper Convert is a great choice for players not interested in taking apart their Nintendo 64 to cut or replace physical components, especially when it comes to harder to find variants like the Pikachu Blue or Fantastic Fire Orange units. There are a couple of drawbacks though. For one, the cartridge tends to wiggle a bit in the slot with no real effort. It's a little disconcerting, but it doesn't seem to affect the playback. More so than that though, the Hyper Convert sure does have quite the grip. In fact, it will come right out of the N64 if attempting to remove the installed cartridge without bracing it. Still, this $25 US dollar adapter beats having to buy multiple consoles or mangling the cartridge slot of the ones you have. So getting your import games to play is one thing, but actually playing them? Well, that Nintendo 64 controller isn't doing anyone any favors with its frankly terrible design. Not to mention an analog stick that literally grinds itself into dust. As it turns out though, Hyperkin can help with this too. Enter the Admiral Wireless Bluetooth Controller. This modernized take on the Nintendo 64 pad ditches the center prong, relocates its octagonal gated ball and socket style analog stick to a position reminiscent of an Xbox pad and doubles up on the Z trigger love giving players the ability to use their left hand or right hand fingers for Z-Trigger functions as they see fit. With its built-in lithium-ion battery and ergonomic design, the Admiral feels good. Really good. Its plastic finish feels more like stone than injection molding, and it's neither too heavy nor too light. The D-pad is still easy to reach, and the A, B, and C buttons somehow feel even better than the original N64 controller. Connecting the Admiral to an N64 is easy enough. In addition to the included micro USB charging cable and instruction manual, it comes packaged with a multi-purpose dongle, which not only receives the controller's Bluetooth signal, but also features a connector for an N64 controller pack to load and save game data. Of course, the N64 controller pack and all third-party options we've looked into have battery back save technology, so the vast majority of them are either dead or dying without having their batteries changed which in itself is a bit of an undertaking. This isn't an issue for the Admiral though, as it has a secret weapon, a micro SD card slot. Yes, that's right, players can use a micro SD card to save their Nintendo 64 game data rather than relying on archaic battery saves. Wireless gamepads are a dime a dozen for retro consoles these days, but an SD card solution built in standard with one? That's pretty special. Though it doesn't have rumble support, the Admiral is still a much better solution for playing Nintendo 64 games than the system's own controller ever was. Being a Bluetooth controller, the Admiral can even be used for PC, mobile, and Switch gaming as well. If nothing else, it adds even more value to the Admiral's 40 US dollar price tag. Hyperkin is doing some great things in the retro and neo-retro gaming space, and the simplicity of the HyperConnect and the elegance of the Admiral have us itching to fire up our Nintendo 64 to relive the 90s in a whole new way. So what better time is there than now to see just how the HyperConnect and Admiral perform? Uh, yeah, we're going to play uh, Asteroids Hyper 64, a North American release on a Japanese 
Nintendo 64. So I'm just going to, I've got the Admiral here. I'm just hit the sync button to uh, get it going. I don't know if you can see the blinking light there or not. The, uh, there we go. You can see the blinking light. So Asteroids Hyper 64 um, is a game that I remember reading about in a magazine and they were interviewing the devs for this game. And you know what they said? They said, <laughs> I'll never forget this. We chose to call this Asteroids, simply Asteroids, no mega, super, hyper, or anything like that. Not even Asteroid 64, just Asteroids. And then, no shit, two pages later, Asteroids Hyper 64 <laughs> in an ad. It was kind of badly timed. Um, so yeah, they, they kind of straight up lied. Cam says R-Type Final isn't even out yet. Our Dalek says Asteroids Hyper 64, the lesser known sequel to Asteroids 98. Maglong says, nice, now you can stream uh, Sin and Punishment. Aha, that's a big asteroid, okay. I haven't played this game ever. <laughs> Let's uh, see what we can do. Okay, shields. Oh, warp. Very good. Oh, Zoop says, oh, heard that explosion. PM says, boom. Respectful says, gotta run, back to work. Hope to catch you next stream later. Have a, good, have a good day, Respectful. For sure. Thanks for joining the stream. Entertainment also hey, says, there we go. kaboom. Is there no music to this? No. Oh, what? I could barely see that thing. <laughs> All right, so there are issues. <laughs> <sighs> PM says, my favorite thing to do in the original Asteroids was holding shield just a tad too long. Ikabubu says, anyone remember when they tried to make an Asteroids movie? Did they, did they really? actually? <laughs> of course they did. Dalek says, uh, Blastroids is better, me thinks. Oh, yeah, definitely. Dalek says, Asteroids music? The only music in Asteroids is Bloom, Beam, Bloom, Beam, Bloom, Bleam. Oh, no. I wanted to get that thing. Bush and Ryu Cat says, uh, Mud Prince, ever play Robotron 64 or just Robo Robotron 2084? You need to play that. I think we've got Robotron on uh, PlayStation. I think Megalong sent that along. Cam says, so is that modernized Missile Command any good? Which one? I think I might have formatted my memory card wrong. Hold on. Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. Oh, there's different ships. Okay. Excalibur. Yeah. Oh, I got a charge shot. What up? <laughs> I didn't really mean to wow. do that. Wow. <laughs> uh, sure. That was wrong. <laughs> it was. Rock bits everywhere. Oh, noes. Oh, noes. Yeah, the, the analog stick is nice and responsive, actually, on the Admiral. It's got, like, a really good feel to it. Uh, <laughs> Game Boy says, lol, charge shot is like dollar store death blossom. <laughs> yes, I 100% I, uh, agree. It's dollar store something, that's for sure. I know, I should be, like, working on my book. But ah. Boom! Wow. Yep, that did not work as well as I had anticipated. Oh my god. You get brushed by one of these things and you are finished. PM says, we're locked into the moon's gravitational pull. What do we do? Megalong says, yeah, Ed, smoke does rocks. <laughs> Nose. Ikabuba says, don't worry, guys. We've got Ed defending the planet from incoming asteroids. Oh, there's like, my, I can I can leave mines behind. That's kind of interesting. That says, the bugs whacked us, Johnny. Hashtag Star Troopers. Yeah. Game Boy says, the most impressive thing in this game is the explosion when your ship bites it. Yeah.
Aha. Yes. Level two. So yeah, I think the uh, the hyper connect, or sorry, the hyper convert and the admiral are a resounding success. Uh, I'm using the D-pad now, by the way, guys, um, and it feels pretty good. I imagine uh, a game like um, Mischief Makers would actually feel really good with uh, this controller as well. Don't, since I never liked asteroids. There was a game, it was an asteroid alike uh, for Mac by Ambrosia Software called Maelstrom. That game was something else. I rather enjoyed it. It was freeware. And if you've got a Mac, you can still, you can, you can get it, you can download it, and it's still playable on most, I think it's still playable on any Mac system. Uh, I would highly recommend tracking it down and playing it. Dalek says, I'm not really a fan of space war likes. But Bushin Ryu Cat says, how do the directional controls work for asteroids on, six, on the 64 pad? Uh, left and right to turn left and right. Um, let me see what up and down does. Up and down does nothing. Um, the A button fire. Oh, wait, is that the A button? No, the B button fires, and the A button uh, enables thrust. Um, and you can press C down to change your direction instantly. Fat says Bruce Willis would not be pleased with you letting them asteroids get you, Ed. Hashtag Armageddon. I know. I'm a failure. Ah, failure. See? Entertainment says, I will say this game's background might be the highest res thing the N64 ever had. Lol. I don't know about that. This is still just 240p. <laughs> Ikabubu says, I can barely see, even see these goddamn asteroids. It's like black asteroids against a black background. I mean, you can't fault it for its realism, at least. <laughs> oh, shit. Death to you. Game Boy says, I wonder if you can put a strip of padding with adhesive on either inner wall of the cartridge adapter to stop the carts from wiggling. And you know what? I'm thinking of trying that, actually. Uh, I'm going to hit the dollar store tomorrow and see what they have and with regards to a... Uh you know, a, a thin foam that I can throw in there. That says, in space, no one can hear you. Pew, pew. Dalek says, do a barrel roll. Oh, we're getting to it. <laughs> Push start. Okay, main game. Let's go. Star Fox Big Geeky. Let's go. Aha, that was big. All right, okay. Gotta be careful about the uh, Z trigger business here. Fats ask, why is McGruff the crime dog in this game? McGruff the crime dog, what? Nani? Done, done, done. All right. Tell me to do a barrel roll. Mm, Alex says no, it was an RX 360. They only made two games for that. Afterburner isn't one of them. Get on over here. <laughs> Yes. Fat says, I can say that Japanese Slippy's voice is less annoying than American Slippy's voice. Oh, definitely. Hashtag help me. Fox, help me. What level are you on? I don't recognize any of this. This is stage two. Is it really? Yeah. These are hard to hit. Okay. I used to be really good at this game. Once upon a time, uh, I had every medal in the game. It was a little excessive. Talek says, show me your moves. Show me your moves. Oh, yeah, I didn't really get the one in the middle. Oh, well. Let's see if I can get this one. Yes. Perfect. That should do it, too. Awesome. Worth noting that he actually calls it rolling rather than a barrel, a barrel roll, which, you know, makes sense. 
Fat says, I have a 3DS version of Sarah Fox, but have yet to play. Hashtag the backlog. I want to get that too. I thought we had it. No. We have Star Fox Command, which is kind of shit. <laughs> Alright, here we go. These are going to throw me into a, uh, a thing. Dalek says, I recently tried OG Star Fox in Dolby Pro Logic. It was pretty darn cool. Oh, yeah, I imagine. Mm, I missed. Almost got it. Close, but no cigar. All right. Where's this boss? This guy. He's got a way better voice. <sighs> All right, bring it on, buddy. Fats asks, how do the controls feel with the Admiral, Ed? Really good. Um... The, uh, the analog stick is nice and responsive, which is always a plus. There is a bit of asymmetry when it comes down to the, uh, the Z triggers and the, uh, the shoulder buttons. But, uh, it doesn't take much, uh, much time to get used to. Is that so? Bring it on. Yes. Uh, worth noting that he actually called Fox a bastard. <laughs> That's pretty great. Not bad at all. I think this is where I fight Star Wolf for the first time. Fat says, due to Game Boy's shoot the forecast, I think I need to get a copy of Darius Twin for my SNES. What are your thoughts on Darius Twin? I've got two copies of Darius Twin. <laughs> oh god, what? <laughs> Plus we've got the Darius Cosmic Collection, which of course counts for two more. Oh god, why did I ask? Well, so much for Peppy. Yeah, peace out, buddy. <laughs> that guy's voice. Should be able to circle around and get him here. Gotcha. There we go. Yeah, this works. Yeah, I do rather like the Admiral, actually. This is a pretty great controller. Uh, this is Bluetooth as well, so you can use this on PC and on the Switch if you so desire. Um, pretty good stuff. Uh, so we're definitely going to have to put its paces in other ways. But uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty impressed with its performance so far. It's responsive, which is surprising enough. Um, Bluetooth is usually pretty sluggish in terms of uh, in terms of um, button response, but this is snappy, and that's always a good thing. With the animal flying in this game, looks easy. Yeah, it feels really good, and uh, I just no just kind of noticed that the. Um, The uh, button response is really quick, so I can <laughs> I can pull up some decent rapid fire with this too. Bam! Right in the face. Gone.
Very nice. Got that mission complete. What, what, what? That's as well. You made it look like you had turbo fire with how fast you beat that boss. Fixes damn. The Landmaster makes the Metal Slug look bad in terms of mobility. It deserves the super vehicle title. Mega vehicle. Alright, where's the thingy? There it is. Bam! You're in for it now, pal. Yup. I kicked his caboose. That's right, 50 hits. Boom! Now what? That's only slightly excessive. Very good. Yeah, um, I'm really liking this controller for sure. It's not bad at all. It takes a bit of getting used to figuring out where stuff is, and there is a bit of asymmetry when it comes down to using the uh, shoulder buttons and Z buttons, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I dig it. I'm just trying to stay alive there, Peppy. Come on. Ah, bugger. There it is. Yeah, he straight up swears. Alright, well, that's it. Obviously, the Admiral has done its job. Admirably, you might say. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Definitely uh, recommend it if you don't want to be uh, junking around and cutting stuff open and digging stuff out of your Nintendo 64s, especially if it happens to be a rare unit. Uh, the, hyper uh, the Hyper Convert does a good job of letting you play a Japanese game on a U.S. system or a U.S. Uh, game on a Japanese system. Um, probably wouldn't, I still probably wouldn't recommend putting a PAL game into a North American system or a North American game into a PAL system because who knows what would happen. You can get the Hyperkin Hyperconvert Universal Cartridge Adapter for Nintendo 64 for about 25 US dollars and the Admiral Bluetooth Nintendo 64 controller for about 40 US dollars on Hyperkin's website today. Links in the description below.